welcome to the alternative investor we often speak about the savings and investment rate of south africans touching on the many complex reasons why the country has one of the worst household savings rates in the world however a growing number of financial service providers are realizing that uh, it needs to be addressed and this is through uh, democratization of uh, investing for more we're joined by helena conradi who is the ceo of satrix investments helena thank you so much for your time this afternoon Thank you very much for having me. So let's unpack this, um, you know, definition of what we mean when we say democratization of investing. Yes, so if you think of access, democratization of investing actually means that you provide access to the ordinary man in the street. So there's different ways of providing access. It's access to information, it's access to products, it's access to the people, to the markets. So you want to provide access in a costly, in a, or a cost-effective way rather, um, to everyone so that they can own the market and actually get access to China or any other fund or any other market. And I think there's different ways of doing that by either um, lowering your product costs or by lowering the, the access vehicle, the access platform as well. Um, there's platforms through which you access the, the product. And then also information in general. I think that's all part of the whole process of democratizing investments. And that leads then to financial inclusion. So it's reducing inequalities, financial inclusion, financial freedom, anything you want to call it. But it's all about the, the access and making it actually possible for, for people to invest. One of those ways, uh, you know, that we can uh, make it possible for people to invest is through exchange-traded funds. When you look at ETFs, I mean, what do you make of the evolution uh, of that particular financial product in South Africa? Yes, so last year was actually the 20th birthday of ETFs in South Africa, and I'm very proud to say that the first ETF was listed by Satrix in November 2000. So that was a huge year for the ETF industry in total. Um, from those beginnings in 2000, the industry is uh, since grown to 110 billion um, in market cap, and there's 137 um, products in total. So it's still very small relative to the rest of the world, but these ETFs now are providing investors exposure, exactly what we said, democratizing investments to all the local asset classes, sector funds, fixed income property, um, and then also a very important f uh, access to, to global markets. So I think that is definitely a huge instrument. There, there's two specific sectors that makes up a huge percentage of, of ETFs, it's commodities, so if you think gold, platinum, palladium, those funds, as well as the global funds, they make up almost 70% of the total South African exchange traded market. When you look at the um, Satrix top 40, I mean, how has that changed over the years? Yeah, so our parent company, Sunlam, seeded the Satrix 40 in, in 2000 with a massive 3 billion rand. I think that was quite, quite brave and innovative to, to actually um, think ahead. Um, at that stage of, of the market. Um, and today it's still one of the biggest and, and most popular ETFs in the market. In, in fact, it's been voted uh, the people's choice for, the, for three years in a row. So at the end of February, um, it was approximately 10 billion rand in size and almost 77,000 investors. Um, it's also a very cost-effective fund. It costs only, if you think of expense ratio, the fee, it's only 10 basis points. In, in general terms, that means 0 0.0 or 0.1 percent that it costs you to invest in this fund. And over the, the 20 years, at, it has returned close to 14 percent annually since inception. So I think that uh, it's definitely still around after 20 years. What's your assessment of the uh, uptake of ETFs in South Africa and where do you see challenges? Yeah, so maybe as we said in the beginning, the uptake is definitely slower than in, in, uh, in the world. Um, and there could be a couple of things. Like most things in life, I think if, it, if you're not familiar to it and you don't understand it, you dismiss it. So that would be, in my view, the singles single biggest challenge for, for the EDF industry, the acceptance of a passive brand like Satrix, and then also the recognition thereof as a worthy option in, in your portfolio. So awards like Salta, the Morningstar Awards, they are raising the profile of passive managers 
and ETFs, but as an industry, I think we can still do much more to educate the ordinary man in the street as well as the, the sophisticated institutional investor. But another uh, a challenge that, that, that I would mention as well is access and affordability. Now, access, which we've spoken about, I think we've done, we're making progress there. Affordability too, but it's almost like two sides of the, the coin. There's a lot of, of um, there's a lot of competitors and it's always good because it, it, it provides fee pressure and that's normally a good thing. But too much pressure on fees can also lead to, to price wars for the wrong reason, fighting for that market share. Um, and that might have exactly the opposite effect um, than really fighting for the client's interest by putting the viability of the business, and especially in, in, in times like this, the business at risk as well as the quality. So there's a lot of things that needs to work together. The innovation needs to be in the product, it needs to be in the, um, in, in the process, it needs to be in the client experience, as well as the regulatory constraints and, and shortcomings. So I think all of that needs to work together, and then we'll see the, the industry the next 20 years looking as good as the past 20. On that note, then, before I let you go, um, you know, what work has Satrix been involved in to address those issues of, you know, educating the public and uh, increasing access? Um, I can sum it up for you in one word. As you can, can see, I'm very passionate about it, access. So as an investor, no matter the size of your portfolio, you want access to information and you want access to the market. And in all the 20 years Satris has been around, we've made it our mission to make investing less intimidating. And that can mean many, many, many things. You can share information, you can access to the team, the business, connecting with our investors, and then transparent products through user-friendly platforms. So in 2006, we actually launched the first investment plan and that enabled investors to access ECF, ETFs with minimums as low as 300 but in 2015 we partnered with Easy Equities and launched the first online platform right. called Satrix now with no, no minimums and, and you can imagine what, what that can do so just to, to end off with a practical example you can access China right. the second largest in the world by investing in the Satrix China ETF in RANS on an online platform and with no minimums. So I think that's that's providing access and that's what, what the, the gentleman or the gentleman in the street can do with his investments nowadays. All right, Helena, let's leave it there. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. That is um, Helena Conradi, who is the CEO of Satrix. Time to say goodbye to our SABC3 viewers. We'll have more news after this short break.